So four years ago, you picked up your first $30, if I remember, airbrush. Yeah. And yeah. you played with it for uh, something like that, for a uh, ceramic pool. Yeah. How did you switch to the canvas to something like the flat surface? Um, well, it started because, I, as I said, I love three-dimensional. My ultimate goal in ceramics is to, this is a raw piece. So as we talked about this time, um, my ultimate goal is to airbrush this still. That's mm -hmm. my, my blank canvas that's been sitting here now for two years, waiting my beck and call, like, hey, are you ever going to come back to me, airbrush me? I really want to airbrush this piece. I still haven't decided if I want to airbrush underglaze or airbrush with paints, though. I'm stuck in this world. You guys have got me hooked. The airbrush world has got me hooked. <laughs> and I can't seem to get back to my ceramics. I've made one ceramic piece this entire year. Um, really this substantial and it's that kind of terracotta pink base out front when we came into mm -hmm. the center That's the only piece that I've thrown this year other than that I've done like little small commission cups mugs here and there for people But I've been so engulfed by airbrushing. It's been really fabulous So I'm gonna come back to it eventually. I just don't quite know how I'm gonna get there um, So my ultimate goal was is I needed to get better um, I felt like when I was airbrushing like I just did a fade on that piece. It wasn't mm -hmm. anything magical It was just like grading it, you know, and that's some people say it's kind of hard to do in the airbrush world. Um, I, I've learned though, you know, like as you, they say, you start in the center with your center coat and you work to dark and you work to light. And you've got a nice natural blend, if you will, right? <laughs> That's what I did on that piece. It just kind of came as a, like, oh yeah, it's how you do it. Well, it worked out. And then from that point, I feel like I needed to get better. Um, so I started playing with a couple pieces that I don't have here because they were sold or were gifted to someone. Um, I wanted to dive, like I said, into doing more on pottery. But mm -hmm. I just felt like I didn't have the control over an airbrush. And everyone that I talked to, I started, one of my teachers, the guy that actually gifted with uh, all the alien pieces, his father sells for Iwata locally. And he's like, you got to give it a try, man. You got to get more involved. And he's talked me into buying an Iwata airbrush and the clips. And I was like, all right, that's, that's a lot of money. You know, to spend 130 bucks on an airbrush. Nothing anymore, right? <laughs> but I bought one. Mm. And I felt like, okay, you need to get better. So I, I learned trigger control and trying to understand how to reduce paint and just played with that for like two months on mm. paper, on watercolor paper. Literally, I just remember going and doing dagger stroke after dagger stroke after dagger stroke. It was the most boring thing ever, but I learned to control the airbrush, right? I still don't feel I have control over it, <laughs> which is pretty, pretty fascinating to me. I don't know if it's that I'm hooked or if I'm using that as an excuse to keep, I gotta get better before I go back to the ceramic world. <laughs> I don't know what, but um, I feel like I do have control over the airbrush. So that was my goal is to, to transfer in. I still do ceramic side of things. People just don't realize it. So if we look at the mandrel over there, I've come up with my own clay board um, and that's a clay mixture. So I, I'll mm -hmm. take Grolog Kaolin, take my recipe here, right? A little bit. <laughs> I'll take a Grolog Kaolin, which is a really nice white clay body. It's a China clay as mm -hmm. well. I'll mix it essentially with an Elmer's glue, a glue substance body, and then I'll also mix tin. Um, is it tin? Yeah, it's tin in there and tin dioxide, and that will give you a really nice panel. And then I'll float the panel, if you will, a wood panel with that clay. So I'm still airbrushing on clay to a degree. That's another out that I have in the clay world. So I'm like, I'm still involved in clay. I'm, <laughs> I'm airbrushing on clay that I made, right? <laughs> but it's been fun to. to to dive down the rabbit hole of airbrushing and then I just realized that as I was doing it, I started falling in love with uh, the airbrush mm -hmm. as a whole and what it was capable of. As I said, my dad's a painter, so if you look at this painting, this painting is actually an acrylic painting. Um, mm -hmm. It's you know, a traditional brush, if you will, um, Albert Beardstrad replica. And I just, I love painting and I had really been wanting to paint. So I started diving down and doing underglaze painting on cups. So after that piece, the, the Predator piece, I just started to do the airbrush to the side, mm -hmm. but also picked it back up, you know, and, and incorporating a little bit into those pieces, like the background I airbrushed on this one slightly here mm -hmm. and there and sponged in to get the fades, but nothing major. I, I dove down the painting hole. So this kind of ties into the painting um, side of my background, if you will. Um, not really necessarily formally trained into it, just a lot of uh, self-taught playing around a lot of successful failures with a lot of lessons involved and that's really where I'm at as a whole on on everything so from canvas you know we move into ceramic pieces kind of sort of but then if you jump into an actual airbrush piece 
Um, my very first piece was a, a replicated piece that I did of lady's eyes and I was like, eh, it's cool, you know, and I felt like I had an understanding of the airbrush and what I could do with it because I compared it to that person's work and mine mm -hmm. and I was like, hmm, okay, maybe that's, because I felt like this person was pretty good. So then I dived in all the way and I decided to do the Marilyn Manson piece. Um, that was my very first actual airbrushed piece mm -hmm. um, on watercolor paper. And it's definitely, I mean, in my opinion, got flaws. Like every piece I think behind me, it's got a flaw. That's the artist demon, if you will, to look at your work and go, no, you know, well, I see you're the, the mm -hmm. areas that need improvement, but you, you gotta learn to keep your mouth shut, right, about those kind of things in the art world. <laughs> um, because that's just you, that's my way of improving. That's my self-teacher coming out and going, ah, I see that, work on that, improve that for the next piece. So that's my first piece. And that was still done with an Iwata clips. Nothing fancy, you know. Um, and then I bought my first airbrush from you guys. It was actually a Harder and Steam back. Um, like, I can't remember the exact model, but I couldn't control it for nothing. I was just like, I felt like I lost all my control of everything. And I mm. remember talking with you and, mm. and another employee there, and you were the actual one that responded to me and was like, you gotta try the PS. 770 by mm -hmm. Yeah, I promise you, you'll love it. And I was just like, oh, it's, it's you know, okay. <laughs> I've been bit ever since. <laughs> I bought that airbrush and I came up with the T800 and, and kind of just history has taken place. Yeah, so I remember from, from my side, this kind of, this picture puts you in the map of the airbrush artist really out there. It went. I think so, yeah. It, it actually was the first thing that I had airbrushed that I think, I, I definitely wouldn't say it went viral but it caught the attention of, yes. of a lot of people. Um, you guys in particular, I, I was learning about cash tagging and all this different stuff. You know, the art world is so um, self-secluded that if you don't get your stuff out there and you don't have people see it, no one's ever gonna know, you know, um, mm -hmm. about you. So how do you get that out there? I was learning about like trying to self-promote in that manner because I've always just enjoyed the creation process. I don't necessarily care about trying to sell my work, or anything like that, I just love to create. It's that simple, this is kind of like my own self therapy, if you will, you know, it's mm -hmm. kind of like going to the mountains and enjoying yourself and you feel centered. That's what happens when I create art. So, and I just get lost in it. So that piece though, um, I love Terminator <laughs> and that one put me on the map a little bit as far as just, just feeling like I, I knew what I was doing. Um, but I was so lost. You know, one of the reasons I think for this, for, you know, drawing attention is this piece, that's the credits, right? Yeah. Okay. How many colors of actual paint? Do you remember which colors you use here? Do you want the honest, truthful answer? Yeah, definitely. Two. Two colors. Two colors. And I remember having this conversation with Artem. He, he was very curious about how I'd done it because I wrote up a nice review for Spray Gunner and, you know, about the airbrush and the products that I would used. And he was like, hold up. You did that with Createx Colors Line. Yeah. I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know any better, right? No, no, I'm brand new. I, I know nothing about airbrushing. I am literally self-taught and learning. Mm -hmm. This was just local hobby store picked up Createx colors, which is meant for fabrics. And, and, and Artem was like, well, I, I think, yeah, yeah, I guess you could do that, but you really shouldn't have done that. And it didn't work so well, did it for you in your airbrush? And I was like, yeah, it was kind of problematic. I, I struggled, but I came up with a great product, I think. Um, but it was literally two colors. So I learned to paint on a black panel, if you will. I really am fascinated with going black to white and pulling your color forward, if you will. I've been kind of scared to death, if you will, of doing just color and starting out on a white panel. So I, I started out with Marilyn on a solid black piece of paper. I took acrylic paint, sprayed paper black, and pulled my highlights forward. Mm -hmm. And you'll kind of see that technique on that Arnold piece back there in the same mm -hmm. thing, which is drawing. I learned this process where you're subtracting to bring out your highlights. Same process, I thought, okay, I'll use that on airbrushing. That's so I started with him, same thing with the T-800. So I took everything black, went with the black, started out black panel, and pulled my highlights forward with just white Createx paint. Didn't know nothing about it, couldn't figure out why I couldn't get it white. To get some of the brightest brights in there, like, you know, a shoulder panel or, you know, these, I can't mm. even tell you how long I sat there, just light coats after light coats of trying to get that to, to be white. But once I got those areas to go, you know, pulled forward as a highlight, then I would go back in with the shadow, you know, with the dark, the black, and push them in. And it was just this push and pull process, to bring them back and forth to get that to happen. So um, that was the first piece that I really felt like I had an understanding. Yeah, that's that's how you get to really awesome piece using two colors, not metallics. So it's not like you take a, like yeah, a no. color and put it on. Yeah. Metallic, these are two colors. 
Crytek's airbrush color is actually designed for larger nozzle size because they made for t-shirts. Yeah. So t-shirt artists normally use 0.5. Yeah. They had patience to use this 0.18 airbrush. Yeah. Use, yeah it's, and it's, I didn't know this at the time. I had no idea. You know, I'm yeah, self-taught, never taken a class. A lot of If you're using 0.18, Vicket, Auto Air, or uh, Illustration Colors is your friend. Not, yep. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not necessarily the Rush Colors, but yeah, I'm amazed. How <laughs> yeah, I just remember that. That was fascinating to me because that's how it all started, right? You know, and ever since that piece, I've really been addicted, <laughs> to put it simple. Okay. Well, we're going to come back to some of your large pieces later. How did you start with shoes? What made you feel like you want to try doing the. Yeah, definitely. So, the shoes, so I realized that, you know, the airbrush, you, so I jumped from, you know, canvas, this is on a just straight up canvas, you know, local hobby mm -hmm. canvas kind of thing, and sealed down, and I realized, okay, well, I didn't realize that you needed to seal the canvas either, that was another thing that's learning throughout mm -hmm. this process, that if your panel or your substrate is not set up properly, it's not going to take the paint properly, mm -hmm. so that was a learning experience. But I realized in that time that, hey, you could pretty much airbrush everything. I was seeing all these other artists creating pieces on cars, tanks, helmets, shoes, mm -hmm. and that caught my attention. I was like, wow, shoes, that's kind of cool. I've always been kind of a shoe fiend in the past, if you will. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I can do some shoes, maybe. Maybe I can do that. I think I'm okay enough, as in quality, that I could put my work on something that maybe someone will wear, you know, and go out in the world and, and show off, you know? Um, and be proud to represent that because you know remember I, I think of the tangible object the shoes are tangible to me you know if someone sees that mm -hmm. it's a representation of myself so i started out with just the nike sb picked up myself you know special shoe if you will um special pricing if you will like you know buy one do one half off kind of thing because mm -hmm. <laughs> i was nervous um and I, I learned a lot of lessons um you'll see a, a huge difference so this was my first ever shoe that i airbrushed um yet again mm -hmm. learning lesson not bad right it's uh it's not as vibrant as it needs to be. It's just, mm -hmm. it doesn't pack the punch that I was looking for. And it was because I didn't realize that you needed to seal yeah. your shoe, right? Seal your canvas. I had no clue. It's a learning experience. Um, did that and was like, wow, you know, that's cool. But I reached out to Jeff Chamberlain because I knew I'd heard about this product, about mm -hmm. the kicks. And I was like, what is all this jazz about? And he's like, oh, you got to try this product to seal up the shoes at least, you know, make them last. And I'm like, all right, cool. Did that. Also learned a lesson because they went from being much more vibrant, in my opinion, to not as vibrant as they should have been because I dry sprayed the LK Kicks on. Mm. Didn't realize this. You can actually feel a slight texture to them, mm. and it's because I was too high air pressure shooting that product through my airbrush because I wasn't using the right nozzle size. Mm. It's so much learning that takes place. I love that, but I also keep me on my toes, <laughs> if you will, in this airbrush industry. It's a... Uh, it's okay for what it is, but there is a huge difference between this, which is my first shoe, which I did just this last year in 2020, mm -hmm. I'd say about June. Um, so I really, we have to back up for just a second. My very first yes was this one. This one took place, I'd say about July or August of 2019. So I have not been airbrushing for even two years, two actual years yet, and I've picked up all this. The airbrushing started for me because of um, an eye condition that I have. I was scared. It's called keratoconus. And what's happening is the cornea is detaching. It's becoming loose or lax in my eye. So when you think of like a camera in Boken or a kaleidoscope as a child, when you look through it, you see multiple images. That's what my vision is. So I'll freak you guys out. If I look directly at the light, and I have to apologize to anyone that, you know, if I not making quite the eye contact because the light blinds me. What happens mm -hmm. is I see eight of you standing there because the light hits me in the eye. So when I airbrush and I'm looking at a line, I have to focus on the most pronounced area, whether I'm painting or airbrushing. I have to, 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 you know, like when I look at my finger, I see three fingers. Like there's an offset of the finger to the left and the right and slightly above my actual fingertip. So I know though that I'm touching this tooth based off the most pronounced line work, if you will. So that's how it all began, because I was scared. I thought I was losing my vision, I didn't know what was going on. I thought I just needed glasses, I realized I was diagnosed with that eye disease, but I can't really cure. Um, it's just gonna kind of unfold as time happens. <laughs> and I dove down the realm of eye brushing. So two years ago, that's where I jumped in. And this is, I'd say about six months old, but still a learning process, because big difference between that and something like what I'm wearing right here, mm -hmm. 
where you understand how to use a product, right? And that huge difference between the, the pronounced color scale. Um, I learned to take my colors and mix up my own grayscales, if you will. So that's probably about a four or a five, just more or less mm -hmm. colors used, um, you know, from black to white, still just basic black and basic black Createx um, illustration line. And LK Kicks is a base coat. And then from there, I learned that you just, you can't, you know, you use more concentrate. If the paint mm -hmm. is not right, you back off your reducer. It's, it's a learning process, but huge difference. You know, I still knew what I was doing. I felt like here, but it didn't look like it compared to this. And it's just simply because I didn't prep the surface properly, you know? So started out with shoes because I just really was, a, you know, interested with that. Um, did that one right before I did these shoes. I literally jumped mm -hmm. from this piece to this and you can still see a slight difference. I started getting a little bit more figured out towards the end of how to really punch in the white, but not quite like I want, you know, um, or anything that should be. Um, my latest ones that I did are, these ones, the James Bond themed shoes. And that one is, I, I've started learning how to manipulate the products to my advantage. So mm -hmm. using that gray shift or the white shift, you mm -hmm. know, all these different terms that you hear about to, to your advantage, you know, like if you want the highlights to show and have that kind of metallic look, well, use the gray shift intentionally, you know, and, and you have that happen yeah. in a car that all of a sudden looks metallic, if you will. And, the face, same kind of concept. You can get those highlights to look different based off of, you know, using the paint to your advantage. So, nice. um, okay, product though, man, it's, that's great. Uh, Jeff has been awesome in giving me some advice, you know, here and there on what to use, what not to use, um, how to seal the products, how to not. Uh, it's been fun. It's a new, a new venture for me. I realized that I can just kind of dive down any area and lay mm -hmm. the paint on really any substrate. And that's really beautiful to me. Um, like I said, I, I love painting. So to be able to, to blow the paint and never touch the canvas, it's been exciting. Jeff had a class in our studio back in Florida, I think it was 2019, right? Before, before the college stuff. Okay. And oh man, he knows so much about the materials, laser especially. It came mm -hmm. off his own for me, it's like good laser, bad laser. And he brought like him 12 different samples. Yeah. And that's the difference. Like, okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. And it's quite a knowledge. But He's yeah. been helpful, that's for sure. It's been way over my head. Let's just say that. I'm learning constantly. <laughs> okay, so what's, what's your favorite paints now from uh, what you've done so far? Oh man, that's hard. So I, I, I'm really fond of being able to do black and white. So mm -hmm. I just, I love black and white stuff. Um, but I think that it depends what I'm doing. You know, if I'm going to do a black and white piece, to punch in some areas I've learned that like I can use the wicked line, the wicked mm -hmm. white, and I can really punch in some stuff. But I also learned that your guys' paint line, the no-name paint line, is great, right? It's the... It's not no-name paint line, so there's difference. It's which from, which from one did we... No-name products is the line for something existing in different markets, or sometimes yeah. even in the same market okay. instance, just under different brands, and we create no-name products, you know, just make fair price direct from manufacturer. Yeah. And if you have something special in a special form, like chromair paints. That's the one, chromair. Sorry, goes, yes. It goes out yes, chromair. I apologize. Chromair. Your yeah. white in there has been my favorite to use. Cold or white? Uh, the, just the straight white. I think it's like Arctic or cold, so it's cold probably cold. cold. Yeah. It is, it punches hard. It's mm -hmm. nice. So if I want to build up that white, I'll use a combination, which people tell me you can't do. I can do whatever I think I can, right? I don't know what I'm doing, so I can say in my mind, I can do it. <laughs> I'll take and mix it with Createx, you know, um, as in like I'll apply the Createx illustrations down low because it's not, it's just not as transparent, you know, your guys, mm -hmm. but that's what I want. If I want to punch in something, it hits hard. And I like that person. So I've been really addicted to your guys' white lately. Um, but I can't say that I have a favorite, you know, like in an actual line, prop line of paint, um, I can tell you, I really love <laughs> the Creole 770 that you guys recommended to me. That has been my go-to airbrush. If I would have known about that. You probably not have one of the biggest collections of Creos airbrushes in the States. So you got 770, as far yep. as I know, you got Tracer 771. Yep, you just purchased that. 290. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and it's really interesting. So, you know, they're compared to a very popular product. Mm -hmm. Um, I find myself reaching for the Creos line before I do the other popular product 
Um, you can compare it to that other popular product. I, I still, you know, I'll have them all out. I usually mm -hmm. have about six airbrushes that I'll run at a time because I just find that it's easier to just load mm -hmm. up my whole grayscale into there yeah. and start out. But they're all dependable. It's just that I find that I'll put the colors that I'm going to use the most mm -hmm. in those airbrushes. They just work. It's They work flawlessly. Every time I pull back and I, I, I get consistent reliability out of them. And I love that. If I can pick one product that I like the most, it would be the Creos line. It's just been, it's been really good. You know? And the 290 model, the one with Trigger, what, yep. do you, what do you use it for mostly? Um, I use, so I actually, let's see, I have the 290, then I have the one that's like, uh, yeah, the 290. I'm trying to think of all the errors that I have. Mm. I've got so many people over here. <laughs> I'll use it to top coat all my pieces. So if I'm going to seal a piece off, that's what I use. Um, so like the LK Kicks, I'll run that through. Um, mm. This, you know, same thing. This is probably my two latest ones of really understanding how to use that product as a top sealer, if you will. Mm. And that works great. That airbrush, it just flows nice. It's a 0.5 needle. I can run the paint through it. I can do the same thing with uh, the Cryptex UVLS. Um, and, and that's how I seal, you know, this piece, this piece, that one, that one, pretty much anything that's airbrushed. So if we're going to point out all the airbrush stuff up here, the shoes are airbrushed. Mm -hmm. These panels right here are airbrushed. The Manson is airbrushed. The Elephants are airbrushed. The Edward, the Billy, the Mummy, the Popeye, and the, the Mandrel. Those are all airbrushed. And all of those were sealed with the, you know, the PS. It's 290, right? The trigger? 290, yes. Yep, 290. 0.5 needle. And it just works great. Um, I love that Createx UVLS, the clear, it works pretty good too. I, I love that it's got, you know, variety, like you can get satin, you can get high gloss. I kind of like the in between. I'm not necessarily fond of the high gloss just mm. because it adds that reflective, you know, tendency to it. And if you want to see the product, the in between, the satin, the matte, the flat, it's you, nice. You can mix them all the long. I know. And that's the other thing is that, yeah. that people tell you, no, you can't. I can. You can. I've done it. <laughs> I've been doing it. <laughs> So, yeah, and the chrome air paint's actually also designed to be mixable with anything from credit. I know, and that's what you've told me, and I've, I've really enjoyed that, so it's been fun. What kind of finish is here? Is it factory or is it what? Yes, like so that one is the factory finish that's on that one. Um, okay. The LK Top Kicks factory finish. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I found, you know, it's kind of funny, it's a learning process yet again. So, you know, I talked to Jeff about how to use these, and this is before I talked to him about it. Um, I read somewhere, you know, someone said, oh, you can just use, you know, the factory finish as just like a base coat, you know, on your shoe to seal it up. It works. These are a great example of that. Mm -hmm. So the factory finish down first on them and then start building up my product, right? Um, talked to Jeff though and found out, he's like, well, it's not exactly how it was designed, but you could do it and it works good too. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly it works. I worn the heck out of these and they, they held up. Um, I actually did these for my girlfriend, uh, Jessica, and she has worn these every day. I had to pry them off her feet today to be able to breathe. <laughs> and the product just holds up. So I learned that you need to actually use, you know, a different beginning product, you know, like the sealer, the primer that he mm -hmm. has, those kind of things you should use first. And it just will adhere a little differently. Um, and it works. It's, it's slick. I really enjoy that stuff too. So four years ago, you picked up your first airbrush. Yeah. 2019, and I checked the records. I uh, purchased the 77, I believe, June of 2019. So this came uh, around, as I said, July, yeah. August. Yeah, yeah. And since then, pretty much all of those high detail projects came followed by. And have you watched some YouTube videos? Where, where did you pick up that? Yeah, I have watched. Okay, so you know how everyone tells you can't learn from watching YouTube? It's true to a certain degree, and I and I believe that because um, you can only watch so much before you have to, to practice what you preach, right? Mm -hmm. You got you got to try hand in hand. So, what I would say is a lot of hours in the YouTube, yes, a lot of talking to the artist community. Um, one thing that I can say that's very different in the ceramics world where I come from to the art community in the airbrush world, you guys are so much more humble in talking. Um, ceramicists have this ideology that that we share everything. They do, but they like to leave out the details. So like, I'll give you my glaze recipe, but I'm not going to tell you the exact amount of this chemical that's in there. So you'll never be able to replicate my recipe. Whereas in the art community that relies on the airbrush world, you guys will share. 
and it's awesome. I just talked to Chad Kennedy the other day. This guy told me exactly what I needed to use for being able to clear coat my helmet, you know, that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. and, and told me exactly what to do. Um, it's in lots of YouTube videos too, like I said, um, a lot. And I'm, I can't even tell you how many hours I've watched. Mm -hmm. I watched a lot of stuff that I tried did not work out well. Hence, using Createx colors mm -hmm. line, because <laughs> I was like, oh, that dude's, okay, cool, I've seen colors. Okay, I can get that at Hobby Lobby. Sure, I'm just learning here. So um, the only class that I have actually taken, and it was a, I don't wanna say like a formal, informal, I don't know how you consider it, a digital class it was with Jeremy Car Carney, Carey, I believe his last name, something like that. Jeremy, it's all I know, I'm bad with the last names, first names I can usually get. But Jeremy, I did the Popeye with Jeremy, um, and that was to venture me out and get me outside of my comfortability. I love black and whites, I said. I don't know what it is about black and white. I understand how to get the dynamic range mm. in there, the scale, you know, the grayscale to, to manipulate it. Color, I can do color, as you can see with the Beard Shad replica, but it just scares me. There's something different about it, but it's very addictive. Um, I took the class with Popeye and realized, okay, I can do color, I understand. Mm. Um, when I first started playing with color, I was scared because all these paints are transparent from the Createx illustration mm. line. And a lot of other lines have that, that transparent quality, depending on how you mix mm. your ratios. That scared me because I, you know, like you would think, okay, if I take red and I put, you know, some other color with it, you would expect something. It doesn't always turn out that way because they're, I don't know what it is, but it's just different, you know? Mm. <laughs> and my, my formal training through my father is understanding that, you know, if I put red and blue, I'll have purple. It doesn't work that way. And I, and, and then on a color painting, I use, transparency so I thought I understood it I used mm. like uh, you know a transparent liquid is what they call it to mix mm. into your paints so that was my very first painting I ever did right here was my father of the crow Brandon Lee and I'm a Brandon Lee theme obviously you can see a lot of Brandon Lee stuff I have him tattooed on me also but that's oil um, and I thought I could take the same ideology and mm. apply it in the airbrush world doesn't work <laughs> so it's it's been a learning process but once I realized that after taking that class with him, okay, I can jump down the color road. So from there, I jumped back over into the shoe side, mm -hmm. and that's where I started playing with like the carnage and venom and the colors, because I was like, oh, I got an understanding of this. I need to dive more into it to really feel like I grasp it. Um, and then from there, I jumped into wanting to, like I said, I was a, I do photography on the side. Kind of backed off on it because of my eye syndrome, or eye condition, if you will. But I still have all my gear. And I, it's very professional gear. I love taking photos of nature, um, of animals, stuff like that. And so, you know, I'll take a lot of like imagery and recreate it, um, but it's not mine. So I thought it's time to mm. take it and make it my image, my creation, my everything, if you will, except the airbrush. I can't create that. I didn't create my paint. So I can't claim that fame. But Jelani, which is found at the Denver Zoo, um, this is their mandrel. This is probably one of my latest pieces besides the shoes that I've jumped down into. This was my second to last piece. So I did a pair of shoes and then this one. And this is actually my photograph that I took of Jelani, which is the name of the mandrel that resides at the zoo. I want to say that he is 17 years old. He is like the elusive mandrel. I've been trying to take a photograph of this mandrel and have it be quality since I've owned my first camp my first camera <laughs> I couldn't do it he's just so he won't pose for you mm -hmm. and the one day I went I was like he's there this is mm -hmm. it I can make it happen and I I sat in front of that you know area for probably an hour for the right picture the right mm -hmm. image the right thing so I went home then played with it took out the weird sheen that happened in the background because there was this weird look to the photo because I was mm -hmm. shooting through glass and I didn't quite have the right filter on to be able to do it but I was going to make it happen I was determined <laughs> and my goal was this I'm gonna then airbrush that. Mm. So then I took all the, the knowledge that I used from taking class with Jeremy and applied it. And I'm pretty happy with it. You know, um, Create Text Illustration color line yet again, um, punched in the chroma whites to get, you know, like if you're gonna go backwards. So um, this is also um, on a panel. So a clayboard panel, like I talked about briefly earlier, I like that the best. I've played with a lot of substrates um, and maybe it just because it's clay, you know, and I'm a clay guy. But there's something about the way the clay absorbs. It's really beautiful. You know, if you get a chance to, to spray on a clay board, it sucks that paint in and it's hard to skate it, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. So you can, it's, I don't want to say dummy proofed, but it's definitely much more user friendly mm -hmm. than painting on like leather. Um, 
But you know, even after talking with Jeff, you can open up the pores of leather. So it's all about knowledge base. Like I said, you don't get all the answers unless you start talking to people. And, and this break community, you guys have really opened up to me. I think that's the first piece you ever use is question technique, right? That's yeah. How you learn it? Yeah. Because I can see it on both of them. Mm -hmm. on you. Yep. So, and that's been something really too that I, I've learned is there's different techniques that can be applied. You know, some of these pieces were only airbrush. That's all, you know, they were, you know, like the, the T800 was only airbrush. I didn't realize I could really use like erasers and scratching and different mm -hmm. things on it. Very slightly, I could use erasers, but I didn't understand how to fully function that eraser. Mm -hmm. um, so from that point, I really have realized that there's not like, if you're an airbrush artist, I don't know what it means to be an airbrush artist. I'd say if you're an artist, take all tools that are yeah. disposable and Definitely. use them. So if I can make something happen by using that tool, I'm gonna do it. And that's the same thing with ceramics. I like to incorporate mm -hmm. that. So it kind of felt like I was cheating at first by, oh, you know, use a scratch here and there. No, it's another tool. And I think that that's really important to be able to use all the tools you can at your disposable. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Sometimes, you know, you mean uh, stencils, not as stencils, but like the freehand stencils, what yeah. they call them, so just to get the shape right. Mm -hmm. and you, yep. I was really impressed when a drew player went visit us and we did this uh, clouds. Yeah. Just took a piece of paper and ripped it yeah. apart. Yeah, here, yeah. Here we go. and you would never guess yeah. that you could do that, you know? It's been fun to be able to realize that you can, you can, like you said, take, I mean, I've taken fabric softener sheets, mm -hmm. tore them up a little bit, get some of the, the texture and stuff, mm -hmm. like in a, the, the landscaping part kind of of the uh, elephant yeah. back there, there was mm -hmm. some areas where I just needed to get that kind of fuzzy look and haze, and I was able to take and use fabric sheets out of the dryer, you know, and spray through them. And then using, like I said, torn up paper, or just cut a shape out of paper and apply that on there, and you can really go to town. It's, it's I love it. <laughs> All right, well, you quickly becoming a real inspiration artist for some of the other guys there who's just starting. Do you have any inspiration yourself before you getting into the that, that drives me yeah. as an inspiration? I, honestly, it's my dad. My dad and my daughter. Um, my dad is, he's a fantastic guy. He, he's drove me to, to want to strive to be as best as I can be. He doesn't mm -hmm. realize that, even though I'll tell him that. Um, all the time because I see him and what he's created mm -hmm. and I just want to be as good as that you know and what does it mean to be good that's your own self question um, he always tells me all the time oh you're so much better than me and I'm like y you may see something different than I see so you gotta first understand what you want to achieve as a dream and then chase that and then my other inspiration is my daughter she you know, ever since I've been around with her she has taught me from day one to chase that dream and fulfill a dream whatever that is at that point in time you know whether it was going to school and finishing it as a teen parent and, and then acquiring my degree and finishing it even mm -hmm. if it took me 10 years to do i did it and i finished it so it's it's kind of something to be said that you can achieve a goal too and that's something that i think is really important to be able to show people is that you have a dream chase that dream and then it inspires someone else to chase their dream because they've seen you go through a struggle and even the struggle of creating that T800, I had no idea. I still have no idea what I'm doing, Artem. I have no idea. And that's the part that I love the most about this is mm -hmm. it's been really exhilarating to, uh, to chase the lesson, if you will. And, and that lesson is different every time. Some days it comes with an attitude because something happened at work or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. um, and then you sit down and you relax and you let it out and then there's a whole new lesson that comes out and then you realize, oh, I shouldn't have picked up the airbrush, I shouldn't have done any art thing, I should have went home and relaxed. You know. So there's a lesson to be told in everything. Um, I love that about art in general and those two characters continually teach that for me. My dad, Charles Beatty, and my daughter, Lily Beatty, they push me more than they'll ever know. Inspirational. And it's very inspirational how you, you just described all this, you know, the eye problem behind the screen uh, here. Uh, it's amazing how you continue doing such a really detailed you know, and uh, really nice work with that because uh, it's not the Thank first you. time I, I run something like that, the Gerald Manus, yeah. doing like really impressive color kind of combinations and I really always loved how you, know, how you do these fantasy colors. Yeah. He's going yeah. blind. I yeah. realize he's just like, yeah, man, I'm going blind. Oh, no this. way. <laughs> well, that makes me feel good about myself then because, you know, that's that's a big fear of mine is what am I going to be able to do if I can only see like blur, blur, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, rather than multiple objects and it feels blurry. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Time will tell. Um, maybe my work will evolve, but it's really inspirational to always hear about everyone else and what's, what they're going through too. And like I said, the airbrush community has been awesome to open up. You guys have been awesome. Every time I've had a question about something, 
You know, I thought I had a problem, you know, a problem with one of my products. Nope, you guys concluded, don't, use your air. <laughs> Very simple, and like I said, I know nothing about what I'm doing. I'm learning and experimenting um, as I do in ceramics, and I'm just kind of transferring that into the airbrush world, and, and I'm having a blast doing it. Definitely, with the speed of your uh, kind of learning and improving, I can see here, you'll be teaching class for airbrush in here. <laughs> oh, that would be a blast, that would be great. So I appreciate everything and everybody that's helped you To summarize you. your four years of experience with airbrush, and if you could beg, yeah. can you just uh, put it in one kind of advice for somebody new starting being in issues, or anything, what would, anything you've done differently, or? So my, my words of wisdom would be, don't give up. Don't give up. Um, and ask. It never hurts to ask. I've ran into some characters, don't want to share anything. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fine with that. You don't have to share your knowledge. And, and, I, and some people expect you to pay for knowledge. That's great too. I would have never asked Jeremy to tell me exactly how to paint like that with color. But I took a class. I'm willing to pay. So if you're willing to pay too, you know, to get an understanding of knowledge, do that. Do what it takes, but don't give up. If you chase that dream, don't give up. You're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have things that create problems. Um, don't give up. Just keep going for it. And eventually, if, if you've not given up, something will click. It might not be exactly what you thought you were chasing. Maybe you weren't supposed to be a realist airbrush artist. Maybe you were supposed to be like an impressionistic airbrush artist where it's something new and different. I don't know, you know? But don't give up. Keep chasing. Because I think... My work is a good example of that. You know, I have transferred from ceramics to here. I'm going back to ceramics and now I'm in shoes and helmets and no one says that you can't do it except you. You stop yourself here. If you get outside of the box, um, that's your limiter. So do you think passion, passion is enough for becoming an artist? Do you have to be born with talent, let's say? I don't think you have to be born with talent. So, and I use that all the time with ceramics. Mm -hmm. If you have a vision, so all you gotta have to have is a vision, like I want to be able to throw a mug, right? Or, or create a painting. If you can do that and say that you're gonna do that, if you come across the right teacher, the right teacher should be able to inspire you if you don't have that inspiration. Mm -hmm. But if you can create that mindset that you're not gonna give up and you keep chasing whatever it is, everyone's gonna arrive at a different point in time. But if you keep chasing that, you will arrive. It might not be in the time that you think it should be, but you might be determining that by how much you practice. When I say I practice a lot, I do. I, I spend a lot of time laying in bed watching videos, mm -hmm. <laughs> going through Facebook posts, looking at people on Instagram and their little cheat techniques and going, wow, that looks great. Or wow, I, I'm not gonna try that. And that happens with airbrushing and mm -hmm. ceramics. Everyone is a teacher, even if they're a student, you're a teacher, and I teach that in ceramics too, is that everybody is a teacher. Um, you watch from someone's failures, you learn from that, and you use that in your own work to advance. How fast do you advance? That is determined by how far you practice. How far are you willing to push yourself? I airbrush all the time, all the time. Like I'm constantly picking up an airbrush and playing with it now. Like I said, I have not done a whole lot of pottery this year and I have a lot of pottery people giving me a lot of grief about that. Like, are you even in a pottery anymore? You're just an airbrush guy. And I'm like, no, I'm not just, I'm an artist. So that's where I classify myself is. Where do you fit in? How are you gonna do it? How fast do you wanna progress? You determine those factors. Chase it and keep going with it. I and mean, that's that's the biggest thing. Right. Chase that. And as so, I was mentioned already, right, use any tools. You know, an airbrush is not just one tool you can uh, yeah. Where we got there. Talk about a few things I brought for you here. Yeah. Definitely the apparel is just for you. I have a couple of hats on the yeah, Credex yeah. and the spray gunner. Same with t-shirts. We have a Credex t-shirt wow. here and a spray gunner. <laughs> Devil great. stickers. I'm sure if you ever had those, the map cut Credex map cut stickers. I have not. No, no. Yeah, those are fun. What and are they? fun of stickers. On That's the crazy. They, they're little guys. Oh, I'm just freaking a whole power. Yeah. No, hey. Works for me, right? I stick them on stuff. <laughs> oh, I've stuff. seen them definitely. Heck yeah, now I got some more stuff to represent, right? Yeah, so <laughs> that's awesome. I'll leave those for you. And I just no drop way. This piece there. Cool. You're, uh, well, I said, really a small experience for just four years in the impression world compared to some other guys, but I know a lot yeah. of people will start looking at you, you know, as a as inspiration, as advice, you know, taking guy and then giving guy. Yeah. And that's one of the sets I want you to know about. Okay. So you might be able to recommend somebody just starting or wanted to have like really affordable 
storage there, so we can try if you want to do a rushing off if it's for you or not. Yeah. So we came up uh, together with Credex, it's a combined with Credex okay. box set. Yeah. That's everything you need to start. Wow. Airbrush is there, compressor And it's got there. the no-name compressor, right? Yes. I've seen, yes. Guys, I've seen yes. that video. That, I was so, literally looking at buying one of those from you. So just we have <laughs> some little, uh, little things here, like, you know, mixing stuff and okay. uh, transfer stuff. Sticker in this one. Yeah. Uh, we have five colors of credit extraction because the best thing to work with is low pressure. Mm -hmm. And the small compressor, of course, can, can give low pressure. Yeah. We have a couple of metallic colors. So we have gold and silver. Okay. So you know, we can try 40, 50, of course. Yeah. It's a universal product yeah. for everything. Yeah. You can work with any surface. Uh, we've got even the candy color. Just wow. Three. Have you ever tried the candy Yeah, yeah I've got a couple of candies and those are... So on my uh, Billy piece back there was my first experience with mm -hmm. the, the candies. I use the can... I use... What was it? The Metallic Pearl um, by Wicked. Mm -hmm. Like it's just to give it a sparkle. And then mm -hmm. I put the red over top of it and I was able to get that like red spark it was beautiful it is if you can get a close-up of it it is it's cool Ooh, Ooh, yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> it's everything. Yeah, the candy paints candies they, are great because they're designed for you know the automotive kind of industry mm -hmm. and you know painful car but if you you can apply them into like, real artwork mm -hmm. and find some cool use for it so definitely we just include one for you know people to yeah. try and play with it those are awesome and yes we have the version of the compressor here yeah. is there rush which is single in the box wow. going out of there but it's what it is that's great. That's the whole. So, and what's the the life? Um, I don't want to say lifelong battery of that compressor, but like at a time, if I wanted to go out and airbrush, how much can I get out of it per use? On the say? high pressure setting, which I recommend because it's again it's low pressure compressor, mm -hmm. so I normally work on the high high setting. Yep. I would say forty five minutes. Okay. Completely press wow. down trigger. Wow. So if you're running constantly, yeah, yeah. it's forty five minutes. That's <laughs> for for it to be just sitting there blowing air for that long. I can't oh, have this. that kind of air compressor. How it feels? Wow. That feels great, you guys. I like that. I like that a lot. Oh yeah, I can imagine. Oh, you, so that that's that's slick. Yeah, that's that's and it's the USB C charge. Yes. Wow. So if you lose a charger, you know it's not a problem. Every phone has it. And again, forty five minutes constant running on the battery. If, that's crazy. If you're getting low, you can just plug in the wire and continue working. So yeah. when it's charging, it's still be sprayable. That's insane. So for somebody who wants just to try, you know, see if they're rushing for you, the whole set is what we designed for. And we have a little more margins on it just because we want to push it out more and you know, bring mm -hmm. people to industry. Yeah. So it's really affordable little piece. That's great. That is, I'm just blown away, you guys, by the fact that there's no hose. It's because I'm, I'm so, like, this is new to me, you know, so. And I've got big mitts. I was just talking to Jeff about this, about how big my hands are, but I've got short fingers. So it's interesting that this feels good, you know, because it, it's got some substance to it, you know, I, mm. but there's no hose connected. I'm used to the, like this hose wrapping mm. around my left arm and being a drag, if you will, on my left arm. Mm. So to not have that, to just, that's cool. That's, that's interesting. That's way cool. Yeah, this is something we had out <laughs> since 2019. So, I mean, the model itself is um, have the one year warranty in it, and uh, since 2019, we don't have too many you know, any issues with them. Wow. So, really, for the price, really nice solution to start airbrushing. Okay. It's That's not great. a replacement for your full size compressor. Yeah, yeah. If you're getting into airbrush, if you want to do so, or like that, you're going to have the bigger compressor like with 2D Wheel for. Yeah. Or, but, you know, something like that would be great, too, for someone that's going on location. Yeah, you know, exactly. I mean, you want to take your off with you. Yep. No, I'm not. You wouldn't be really stuck to just sitting in your, your studio. You're right about that. <laughs> you would be doing it anyway. That's. We I'm always, that. we always cool. listen to our customers, of course, and you know, people who work with. And the first time I had guys like Drew Blair taking this in yep. their hands. The first question was about vibration. So when you yeah. do like a super uh, high detail, mm -hmm. you might feel the vibration there. It's, it's still minimum, especially when you're starting, you're not going to be ruining your artwork by that. Yeah. But that's the second generation. It's still in development. It's an early model. But now... I've seen that video. That's, now, that's cool. Yes. Now we have the hose connected here. So it's still a double action. Yeah. We have the other airbrush one. I'll pull this one out. Um, but the whole idea is the same thing, compressor. We're gonna make the second model more powerful than that because it's a little uh, lower than I was expecting. Gotcha. And, but still, it's good for like detail airbrush. And now it's uh, 
It's right in your pocket or something. Yeah, yeah, you put just it in. wherever you need it to be. Yeah, just in your pocket, have no vibrations. And oh, you can hear a difference even on that. That's, that's so, cool. It's, it's, you know, I'll bet you like makeup artists and stuff are really going to dig on that too. You know, someone that needs to be mobile and not have hose run all over and they they got a lot of people maybe running around on set or even something like that. There are many applications, people work in the theme parks, which are mostly closed now, but still, you know, they need to correct yeah. things there and there and just running around with those. And yeah. yes, 45 minutes, constant run time, but it turns off. Yeah, day. exactly. As soon as you let off, it's... So yeah, that's, that's a pretty good, good amount of time and... Uh, Same thing, USB-C charge on that? Unfortunately, on this particular model, not forget. That's, that's the middle stage. I would say model will have the limited quality now available for somebody who wants to, you know, jump into it. So it's more like a learning curve. Mm -hmm. um, see what else we can improve. The next one I want to do pretty much is double the size. So double gotcha. capacity for battery and double the okay. power outcome. Uh, and what's, what's the uh, nozzle needle slip size on an This is point three. Okay. So would you get less or more based off of larger or you know smaller needle? Is it gonna make a difference on your runtime on a hose? Do you know? No, they are gonna still be supply the same, so it doesn't matter what kind of brush. I would say I would not recommend anything larger than point three on this compressor because it's just not powerful enough. Yeah. The bigger nozzle you have, the more air you need to itemize paint correctly. Mm -hmm. yep. So for those little compressors, just make them clear they're detail detail airbrush compressor. Okay. So point Point two, point three, something like that. I'm all about details. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, for for interest, uh, entry kind of uh, people, I think that's uh, that's cool. Something you can always uh, refer to. That's phenomenal, and the tapes too. Can you tell me about the tapes? I've never. So I'm always. Uh, I don't use a whole lot of like taping because I just haven't been doing a whole lot of anything that I need it. But from what I have used, it's just been like your 3M standard stuff to tape off shoes and stuff. Um, how would your tapes work on that kind of stuff? Um, from what I see here, we have some glue left. Yeah, yeah, I, I haven't cleaned it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's one of the reasons I brought you those. So when you use, um, those should be combination pretty much. So this is your sharp edge. Yeah. You put it right under the painting. Okay. And prevents from any paint getting under it, link leaking. So any, and that's really flexible. So if you make any shape yeah. around, you can make it. And that's just really cheaper tape, good quality, which not leaves as much glue yeah, behind. Yeah, the residue but behind still really cheaper up. tape. So we have the first layer of this sharp edge, and then you put just all over yeah. it. Yeah, and seeing that will help it. dramatically. You know, it's funny he calls my bluff on that. See, it's a learning thing. I just haven't taken the time to clean it up. Yet. <laughs> you know, and that's where one of those things. Um, it's it's all an experience. Um, you know, like I got using just straight 3M. You know, like high adhesive kind of tape, and then you realize, oh. You left it on there a little too long, and now I got to learn another lesson to clean up something. So this whole thing has been really rewarding, really like frustrating. Having, having right product, though. having right product, especially flexible tech like this, if you would want it to, you can you know just remove the whole uh, all over here, yeah, and just like, take it off, take it off, and then leave it as it is. So we oh. want to have the artwork around it. Yeah. So yeah, it just uh, you know, takes the right product. Yeah. No, and that's what I'm saying. It's all about the, the you know buying the right product, and your product will take care of you. Half the problem, I think, is just knowing about what the right product is, um, asking questions. If you have the primary set, right, from the common colors. Yep, yep. So I, I brought you a couple uh, other colors to try, and that's newest, the 031, mm. that's the opaque black. Yeah, so slick. You were yeah, that would work black. great, because I was just talking about using the white that was really punching in for my white. Yeah, the white is really opaque, the, and the black other black we the had way, is really transparent. Okay. This is like really opaque black, so really covering itself. Wow. Okay. That's phenomenal. And speaking of the critics, uh, candy colors, yep. it's going to be really sample set. Okay. So you can uh, play with it a little more. I don't know which colors you have, but uh, this is magenta here, uh, yellow and green, emerald green. Wow. So nice candy colors. I really dig this green. This color is... Yeah, we tried to come up with uh, interesting colors, which not easy to mix, let's say, because most of the colors, you know, we can mix from the mm -hmm. primary. Yeah. But the but colors we have in our life, it's hard, it's something hard to you really just like that. That's phenomenal. That's great. You guys are going to have me addicted to just... I'm never going to go back to doing ceramics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I love it, though. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you. I really appreciate the time. It was Art fun meeting you. You're awesome. And Seriously, spray gunner. It's my go-to. I love it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We're trying to be, uh, trying to be the best. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. I uh, appreciate you all watching. Hope it was uh, 
enjoyable, maybe helpful to somebody, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Thank you.